in this captain's ammo tutorial we're going to be showing you how to paint some simple cobblestone bases like the one you see here on our Sir Dreyfus uh, from Riot Quest. As always, a reminder this is a way to paint cobblestone bases, not the way to paint cobblestone bases. There's a variety of ways to do it. I'm going to show you how I paint my cobblestone. So before we begin, I'm going to be going over the paintbrushes and the paints that we'll be using in this tutorial, starting with our paintbrushes. So you're going to need something to do base coloring and uh, washing with. So I, I like to use a scrap brush for this, um, just so I don't use any of my good brushes. Uh, so you see it's a little bit worn on that. We're going to be using uh, some makeup brushes from the dollar store. Uh, you can go get some fancy brushes if you wish, but I find that these work just fine for doing dry brushing and other stuff, nice blending and other things. Um, I bought a set of these for like four bucks. Um, it's, there's actually three of them, but these are the ones that we'll be using for our tutorial. Uh, I'll be using this for stippling, and I'll be using this for some of our edge highlights and dry brushing. And finally, I have some other miscellaneous brushes that I will call upon to do things like washing, finer details, some smaller stippling, and then just in case we have a uh, just a nice de detailing brush. Um, the sizes of them don't really matter too much. It's really preference of what uh, what you like to do. But here, just for reference, these are the ones that I will be using here, the sizes. And finally, the paints. So I primed this with uh, Vallejo Surface Primer Black. We'll be base coloring with Gray Coat Gray from P3. We will be dry brushing with Iron Hull Gray. We will be doing a further dry brush with Hammerfall Khaki. And we'll be doing some detailing and highlights with Troll Blood Highlight. In terms of inks and washes, it's preference of whatever colors or style that you're going for. Uh, we're going to be doing a more cityscape cobblestone, so a little bit sooty, a little bit muddy. So in that case, I'm going to be using some Null Oil. And for the dirt and the grime, I'm going to be using Muddy Wash from P3, but you can also substitute that with Agrax Earthshade from Citadel or Seraphim Sepia or any sort of sepia color uh, from Citadel. If you wish to see a text-based step-by-step, you can also check out the Patreon link below uh, for a full how-to in text format. So step one will be base coloring with our gray coat gray. Uh, I've already completed this on this, so you can see this kind of cold blue gray and uh, feel free to substitute this with any sort of stone color you wish uh, but keep in mind that the uh, other colors following might need a little bit modification but if you follow the steps you should be able to substitute anything you wish uh, to complete the, t the tutorial so for step two we're going to get out our flatter makeup brush uh, it should have a, a bit of stiffness to it it doesn't it shouldn't be bit too bendy and too loose uh, and we're going to take our Iron Hall Gray and we're going to heavy dry brush. So whenever I say a heavy dry brush, I mean it's going to be almost an overbrush or not something that you want to do very dainty. You want to be really aggressive with it. So uh, the reason for it is the next step. I'm going to go straight from the pot on this just because uh, I don't want any moisture or anything. And I'm just going to pull it off onto uh, a spare napkin just to... I don't want to go too dry on this because I want it to take over. I'm going to just lightly scrape along the side here and be kind of random and sporadic in direction because you don't know how people are walking, what's being dragged over this, and that's kind of what I want to I want to capture what I want to grab here. Now I don't want to get too much into the recesses of this right now. I want to just hit the stone. So I'll, that's why I'm, I'm laying it flat. I'm using the edge and I'm dragging it. It's okay if the stone changes. 
little bit of color. We want that darker tone inside with the iron hall on the outside here, on the upper stone. So once that's complete, we can move on to step three. We're going to be taking our gnome oil and washing everything uh, with a watered down version of this. So we don't want it to be pure, we just want it to be a little watered down. We're gonna take a little bit of water on our brush. Let me get my washing brush here, just get it moist. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna take a little bit of water, pull up a lot here, and wash everything here. The reason why I'm doing this is the wash will fall into the recesses. It'll leave the flatter surfaces alone. And the ones that don't, that pool, Make it look like the stone is a little bit stained. And that's kind of where, 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 where we want to kind of build a little variety with. See a little too much. We don't want it to be like overloaded with black. Just pull it off. That looks pretty good. I like some of the staining. I like the outlines here. Just gonna set it down, let it dry. If you are impatient and you wanna get through your bases really quick, you have a thousand of these to do, uh, I recommend picking up a dollar store uh, hair dryer. They can run anywhere from, you know, three bucks up to 10 bucks. So they're, you can get them cheap, you can get them uh, easily, and they make drying stuff really quick. Keep them near your desk and you can't go wrong. So this next step will be a way to build a little bit of texture on your stones and in the creases between the stones. Uh, you want to, especially if you've bought pre-made bases or um, maybe you're using like I am, train set uh, plastic mats that have the cobblestone built in, um, they don't come textured sometimes. So this will be a way for you to build up that texture and give you a bit of variety when you're looking at the miniature. So I, you have two options here. I'm gonna be using uh, the bigger makeup brush that I have here, and also a smaller one to give kind of a variety of shapes and sizes to it. Because if you go too uniform, it looks strange. Again, I'm gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna just do a uh, light stipple to pull off some of it on here, and I wanna go kind of aggressive, but not too much. And I want to angle a little bit here and there. There we go. And I'm going to take my smaller one and do the exact same thing. You don't need to do this step if you wish, but it can create a nice variety. And Focus it on a few, a few stony spots that you feel might be a little bit more scratched, might be a little bit more worn, or have a bit more texture uh, on on the stone itself. And there you go. We've created our texture for the following steps. So the next step is similar to what we did. Uh, earlier with the Iron Hall Grey, except this time we're going to be dainty. We're going to be a little bit more gentle with it, très gentil, and we will be pulling the edges of a couple stones up from the recesses. So we want to, we want to. Uh, it's okay if your brush is dirty from from before. You can, it, it it builds a nice blend when this is the case. So we're going to take a little bit of Hammerfall. I'm going to do the same thing I did before, paint and pull off, and if you're unsure, you can try it on, on your hand. There you go. It should be uh, almost a powdery. I like doing dry brushes on stone and wood and bone and things because it's a very dry uh, material. 
So I am going to take this and lightly go around the model, the model's base, and grab these edges. I'm going to start with the far edges around the actual uh, lip, and then I'll work, work my way inwards. I like to do this because it also lets me test the strength of my dry brush. You might have to press a little bit harder, like you can see that when I drag. It's kind of the same motion, except I'm going to do smaller little stints. Now, if you were looking to catch the light or have specific highlights in a certain direction, uh, my recommendation is to keep all of your strokes and all of your dry brush in the same direction. So if let's say your light source was over here, you would just drag your dry brush only in that direction to pick up the edges of those, of those stones. So in this step, we are going to be using uh, whichever color you choose. Uh, to dirty your stone. So you can use a sepia, you can use a Grax Earth Shade, you can use Muddy Wash, whatever your preference is. You can also mix and match if you want. Uh, for myself, I like to use Muddy Wash for this. Uh, it makes it a little uh, a little bit more pleasant. Um, and it's a, it, it is a little bit more of an aggressive color uh, because it is an ink. So you do need to water this one down. If you are using a Grax Earth Shade, um, you won't need to. You can just mix it up and drop it where, where where you wish. So for this step, I don't want to do a full thing like we did before with the gnome oil. I want to be I want to be picky. I want to be choosy about where I'm placing this. So I'm going to just pull off a little bit on my finger just to see that how much is like what the what the flow is coming off my brush. And I'm going to play with it. I'm going to tell a story here. So I'm just going to dribble this on top of some stones. I'm going to put it in some cracks. I'm going to... I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play with this setting a little bit. So feel free to do what you wish and do many layers if you want. Uh, I'm going to do probably two passes of this just to darken up and build a little bit of a variety. If you have any stones that look a little like 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 these ones here they looked a little bare a little blank add a little bit of mud on there break it up a bit if you are unsure how to where you want this to be a general rule is I like to start in the in the creases and then pull it up onto a stone or onto a texture of whatever it is. Now I already had glued down before painting a little bit of some very light sand here. So I'm gonna take my Agrax or my Muddy Wash here and put it a little more heavier on that sand. If you do have that, feel free to do it. Otherwise, stick to what I said earlier by placing it in the center and just dragging it up where you feel like there be a little more dirt, a little bit more grime, and tell your tale. So this next step, you can actually leave it here if you wish, um, or you could replace it with a dry brush of the Troll Blood highlight. Uh, I'm going to be highlighting this stone, however, with a with my fine liner brush, and we're going to be 
picking out some cracks, some stone edges, and other th uh, other areas that we feel like should have a little more highlight or a little bit more character to the stone. So, um, if again, if you are uncomfortable with fine dexterity uh, movements, this skip this step and just do a dry brush, uh, just like we showed you in the uh, in the step with the hammer fall dry brush. So for this step, uh, you're going to need your trollblood highlight. And if you are choosing to do the dry brush, you can follow the same principle here. So what I like to do is I like to take my trollblood highlight and I like to find uh, areas that when we put the muddy wash down, there's kind of a darker rim, like, like around here. And this to me could be a crack in the stone. Um, so... What I like to do is I like to pick kind of a direction where my light is coming from, and I like to highlight in that direction. Because if you look at stone, if you look at brickwork, you look at other things, when the light's hitting it, it's not hitting all the cracks around. It's going to hit the uh, the furthest edge out. So if a flat surface like this as, as, as a flooring is kind of confusing to figure out, what I like to do is pretend it's a wall, and then that's how I'm going to do it. So let's say the light's coming down this way. I'm going to just pick out that edge there and follow. So the light's hitting this crack down this way. So it'll always hit that bottom edge. And I will go around the mini, the mini's base, and just tap a few. Now we don't want this to be super wet. We want it to be almost a dry paint and just to pick out a few edges a few areas that we would like to see some light hit now if you don't care about the light direction or you don't want to do this again you can you can just dry brush this. So there we go. Cobblestones highlighted, cracked, and ready ready to be finalized. And for a final step of this, uh, this is optional again, uh, but I like to tidy up my base whenever I'm done. Um, clearly it looks a little rough right now, so I'm gonna just take my Thamar Black uh, and quickly outline and clean up the base around the cobblestone, and we'll see you after that. There we go. The base is nice and tidy. Cobblestone looks great. And as a final little nugget, if you wanted to, uh, you could go back through here with your Agrax Shade Muddy Wash Sepia and do an outline of 
the stones and make give it a little bit more depth. So I'll show you this uh, here. Again, it's an optional step. You don't need to do it. You could leave it here and it looks great. Um, but I'm going to do it just to keep it consistent with the rest of my crew for Riot Quest, which this base is for. So as you saw with a couple quick dry brushes and washes, a little bit of patience with some lining and you can get yourself a nice cobblestone base done pretty quick. As a reminder, this is a way to paint cobblestone, not the way. There's always a variety of ways to do it. And if you have a different technique, a different way of doing it, feel free to share it in the comments or uh, comment on Patreon. If you wish to purchase any of the paints, brushes, or models you've seen in this video, you can check on our Patreon page for a detailed list of where you can purchase those. At the end of all of our Captain's Ammo videos or Patreon posts, we offer a challenge up to the community. This video is a treasure-based challenge. So after finishing your cobblestone bases, let's see what people come up with for treasures. So it could be gems, it could be coins, it could be treasure chests. Show us a base or a model based with your best treasure hoard. Thank you everyone who checked out the video today. If you liked what you see, don't forget to follow us here on YouTube and also check out our Patreon page, which will be linked below.